Good morning, everybody. This is Mike Brennan here at the National Hurricane Center. It's just after 11 a.m. Eastern time on Saturday, August 3rd. Coming on with the latest this morning on Tropical Depression 4, still centered here uh, over western Cuba. Maximum sustained winds now have come up to about 35 miles per hour. So systems getting close to tropical storm strength, moving uh, pretty quickly off to the west-northwest at about 15 miles per hour. You can see some of the outer rain bands uh, starting to move across portions of the Florida Keys, mainland South Florida, even as far north as Lake Okeechobee. If we take a look at the radar this morning, you can see some of these squalls and bands of heavier showers moving, especially across the Florida Keys, where we're seeing wind gusts this morning of you know, 30 to 40 miles per hour. Uh, but again, these uh, rains and wind impacts and the eventually storm surge will continue to spread northward uh, through Florida and up into, especially along the Florida Gulf Coast, uh, during the day today and into tomorrow as we expect the center of the depression to become a tropical storm and then move uh, up near the west coast of Florida making landfall early Monday morning. So first I want to talk about the changes to the storm surge watches and warnings. We now have a storm surge warning in effect for portions of the Florida Gulf Coast uh, all the way from Arapica down to up to Asilla River and in this region here we are expecting somewhere in that area of three to five feet of inundation above ground level uh, near and to the right of where the center of this system crosses the coast early Monday morning. So if you live in a storm surge evacuation zone in this region along the Florida Big Bend Coast, please listen to any advice you're given by your local officials. Uh, know uh, if you have to, are asked to evacuate, please know where you're going to go, how you're going to get there. And remember, in many cases, you only have to drive tens of miles inland to get away from the storm surge evacuation zone danger area. We are also have a storm surge watch in effect now from Asilla River west to Indian Pass and south of Arapica to Bonita Beach. In both of these areas, we could see storm surge in inundation of as much as two to four feet above ground level, including places like the Tampa Bay region and Charlotte Harbor, Fort Myers area. So again, everybody needs to be uh, concerned about the potential for that storm surge uh, threat in those areas. The other big threat with this system is going to be the heavy rainfall. And this is the rainfall forecast from today all the way through next Thursday, this coming Thursday morning. Uh, from North Florida, along the west coast of Florida, northeast Florida, up along coastal portions of the southeastern United States, we could see rainfall totals of 5 to 10 inches over widespread areas with isolated totals as high as 15 inches in some locations. So this is place, places like that Big Bend region of Florida, up through Jacksonville, Savannah, Charleston, Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, and Moorhead City, where we could see that very heavy rainfall and considerable flooding impacts develop over the next several days. The threat of flash flooding is going to spread northward. Uh, today, it's most uh, concentrated in South Florida, the Florida Keys, the southwest coast of Florida, where you see this yellow area. A lower risk of flash flooding today up into the Tampa and Orlando areas. As we go through the day Sunday, that risk of flash flooding broadens out across central and north Florida, much of southeastern Georgia, southern South Carolina, coastal southern North Carolina. And then on Monday, we're especially concerned about this region from Jacksonville up to Savannah, Charleston, Myrtle Beach. That's where we have a level three out of four risk for the potential for very considerable flash flooding uh, from Monday morning into Tuesday morning within this region. So uh, the reason for that is that we're expecting this system as it becomes a tropical storm makes landfall at or near hurricane strength is expected here on uh, Monday morning, but then we're expecting a very slow motion after the system moves inland across portions of the coastal southeast. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. In terms of the wind watches and warnings, we have a tropical storm watch in effect for much of the Florida Keys and a tropical storm warning in effect for pretty much the entire west coast of Florida all the way up to Yankee Town and for the Dry Tortugas where we expect tropical storm conditions in the next 36 hours. And we have that hurricane watch now from Yankee Town to Indian Pass Anywhere in those areas needs to be prepared for the possibility of hurricane conditions late Sunday night into Monday morning, as we are expecting uh, this system to become a tropical storm and make landfall at or near hurricane intensity early Monday, and then move inland very slowly. Now you see the motion all the way from Monday through Thursday, takes the center of the system slowly across North Florida, coastal Georgia, and then we could see a stall or a meandering motion around coastal portions of the southeastern United States. So that's gonna exacerbate not just the rainfall risk, but also the potential for storm surge and some uh, strong winds. Uh, the strength of the system will be very dependent on whether it moves inland or stays out over the water and has an opportunity to re-strengthen next week. But folks from northeast Florida all the way from Georgia through the Carolinas are going to want to be paying attention to the possibility of impacts as we go into the week next week and we will likely be issuing additional watches and warnings into those areas as soon as either later today 
or tonight. In terms of the arrival time of those tropical storm force winds along the Florida coast, we'll expect to see them along the west coast of Florida advancing through tonight and early Sunday and arriving within that hurricane watch area by Sunday evening. So uh, in that area between Yankee Town and Indian Pass, you have today and much of tomorrow to get ready, make any preparations to your home, gather any emergency supplies you need, and be prepared to evacuate if asked to do so by your local officials, especially if you're in that storm surge watch or storm surge warning area. Farther downstream, we could see tropical storm conditions beginning um, Monday along the Georgia coast and advancing up into the South Carolina coast during the day on Tuesday and into Tuesday night. So again, just to wrap things up, I do want to touch on the tornado threat today that exists uh, primarily in the Florida Keys, Southwest Florida, places like Everglades City, Fort Myers, Port Charlotte, all the way up to Sarasota. We do have the risk for tornadoes and some of those rain bands, especially later today and into tonight as the center of the system moves into the Gulf of Mexico. So to wrap up with sort of the key points here for Tropical Depression 4 this Saturday morning, uh, the biggest threat, most widespread threat is going to be the heavy rainfall and the potential for considerable flooding, flash and urban flooding across portions of Florida and into the coastal southeastern United States from today all the way through Thursday. And there will be the possibility of river flooding in many locations as well as that heavy rainfall falls and drains into river basins. We have hurricane conditions will be possible late Sunday into, into Monday along portions of the Florida Gulf coast again from Yankee Town up to Indian Pass where that hurricane watch is in effect uh, and tropical storm conditions are expected along much of the Florida West Coast during the next 36 hours. Uh, now that we have that storm surge warning in effect, especially from Arapica to the Asilla River, that's where we're expecting life-threatening inundation from storm surge as much as five feet above ground level in some locations. So please heed any advice you're given by your local officials in those areas. And again, farther downstream, a lot of uncertainty in the forecast, but there will certainly be impacts from northeast Florida, coastal Georgia into coastal South Carolina, coastal North Carolina into next week. Uh, we'll be able to refine the location and intensity and magnitude of those impacts, but everybody in those regions will want to stay tuned and keep uh, stay tuned for updates on this system as we go through the weekend and into next week as watches and warnings will likely be issued for those areas in the next couple of days. So please uh, keep coming back to hurricanes.gov for more information on this system. You can find information on the local impacts in your area by finding your local National Weather Service office at weather.gov. We'll be back with you later today and throughout the weekend and into next week with more updates on this system. I'm Mike Brennan at the National Hurricane Center.